What's up, everyone? On today's episode, Somalia had to apologize for the craziest thing I have seen in a very long time. You got to check it out yourself. Also, we discuss a very important question, just how many five-year-olds would it take to tackle the beast known as Derrick Henry and all the NFL running back struggles going on as well? And I think I might have found the next Victor Wembenyama, and it was in Kentucky of all places. In Kentucky. Check it out. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Tricky Guy Sports. It's your host, Brent Bilski, a.k.a. Double B. On today's show, we got foreigners continuing to take over American athletic germs. They took our jobs! Nerves. They took our jobs! All right, relax. We also have just the idea that, look, man, unfortunately, just because you think you can go against pro athletes, dude, professional-level athletes are on a different level. It's just what it is. We'll get into it. I got some funny videos to react to as well. But the first thing I want to just kick things off with, like I said, I'm going to kind of talk about whether it's five-year-olds, Somali pirates, whatever, going against a pro. I, I It gets so annoying when I had people growing up. You know, I played a little collegiate and stuff, and boy, I'd have idiots try to tell me, you know, I was right there, man. I, I, I'm almost right there. I'm almost in the NBA. It's like, bro, we're in JUCO. All right? Let, let, let's, just knock, let's just knock that off right now. No! I mean, to get, after JUCO, you got to get to D1. After D1, you got to get to a blue blood. After a blue blood D1, you got to get, you know what I mean? Just da 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 wave, 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 wave. No, you can't. Average person, no, you can't. So please, God, tell me as I lead off with this story. Please tell me some of y'all have seen or heard about the funniest goddamn story I've seen. The Somali Pirates. Please tell me y'all have heard about the Somali sprinter controversy in the Olympics. Oh. <laughs> Oh, please tell me this is, I mean, this is so crazy and it's, and it's real. Like there's nothing I'm about to show you is not a joke. It's not fake. This is not a parody. This was not a movie. This is not a spoof. This is not Key and peel. This actually happened. This was real life. And it's one of the most fascinating stories of all time. Is this real life? Uh, and, and by the way, a lot of stuff is going to be visual today. YouTube, in case you're listening on an audio format, please go to the YouTube page, Tricky Guy Sports. We always put up the videos and the audio you know, to go along with the audio show as well. But I put them up right around the same time. Anyways, you can check it out there. But in case you don't know what I'm talking about, in the Somalian sprinting controversy, Somalian sports minister apologizes for the slowest 100-meter university game sprinter of all time. This is... Uh, Oh, I feel yeah, this is just mwah, mwah. chef's kiss to the IOC, the Olympic Committee, and the nonstop corruption, the nonstop bribery, and just nepotism, and just the nonsense that goes on the Olympic Committee. This has got to be the best thing I've seen by far. Hands down, I, without further ado. Okay, so the Somalian sports minister had to publicly apologize Wednesday and ordered that the chairwoman of their national track team and federation be suspended because she let an untrained female sprinter run in the 100-meter dash. This was at the World University Games in China. All right, this is out in China. Let's talk about Chinese people. And uh, Minister Bar Mohammed had to say that he did not know about 20-year-old Nashra Akbar Ali. And like I said, this video has gone viral. He's had to apologize for this. And poor Somalia, it's not like they haven't, you know, it's not like Somalia is really like on a, you know, great opinion when it comes to the world level. I think of Somalia, unfortunately, I think of famine. I think of, you know, the pirates, thanks to that Tom Hanks movie. And now I think of just the saddest display of just letting any... Let's just get to it. All right, so let me show you the video here. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, so this went viral. Um, there was the 100 meter dash out in China for the World University Games, and let's see if you just let's see if you notice anything odd to start things off. Before I play the full video, let's just see. Showing the racers, like right now. I'm just gonna pause it. Any, anything look out of whack? Any, any anything maybe seem a little suspicious? As one might say, you have, let's see, I think that's France. You have Jap Japanese. I think that's Australia. You have Jamaica over there. And then you have that. That lady right there is 20-year-old Nasra Akbar Ali and apparently was a either relative or friend of the chairman who has now been suspended by the Somalian minister because what's about to happen has got to be the funniest. So they ran the 100-meter 
And uh, yeah, instead of 10 seconds, she was in 20. Just see, just, 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 just check this out. All right, so here we go. And they're going to let the, uh, I'll let the announcers do their thing here. So there's the Jamaican. Uh, she's going to win the whole thing. I'll just spoil that. Sylvia Morrell. <laughs> Look at this nonsense here. Got her gut sticking out. She's got on like sweatpants. Just, I mean, the whole thing. She's got like, I mean, what is, she looks like she's somewhere lost between a bar and a swimming event for senior citizens. I mean, dude, this has got to be the most like un. This is real. This is not a joke, what I'm about to show you. Somalia had to apologize for this. So let's just go ahead. So here we go. So they're about to kick off the race. Getting the starting block there. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying, but probably what the hell's going on in the middle row there. And almost there. Jamaica wins, yay, hooray, that's all great. And then 10 seconds later, 10 seconds later, here she comes. Here comes Nasr Akbar Ali. Ali, Bumbaye, Ali, what the F? All right, that's just that. Mm, that's that was that was not a joke. That was real. Is this real life? And, and so apparently, you know, obviously it was shared across social media. They said it was very embarrassing for them. Again, the chairwoman, Kadia Aden Dahir, has been now suspended. The Federation chairwoman for the Somalian national team, who, by the way, said we did not even have anyone that we had official members of anyone on our. We don't have anyone on our track team that we even wanted to send to the 100 meters well enough. This, like, you know, 20 year old, gut protruding, sweat. I mean, just all wrong, just absolutely just it that's bananas that is absolutely bananas that's got to be the funniest thing and i'm going to just play it again in its full entirety here but somalia had to apologize for this because this is unbelievable this federation chair would i don't know how she was just like yeah yeah i'm gonna let my niece or whoever this relative is we don't know all the details i'm gonna let her go ahead and run in an official 100 meter dash and actually like go and it yeah 10 seconds they got done in 10 she got done in around 21 you lose her in frame completely i mean this is the most bananas thing in a already corrupt ioc and olympic issues and all the stuff that they have this is the craziest thing i've ever seen yeah. <laughs> just right now, just look at her. Holy Lord. The sweatpants are killing me, Doug. The sweatpants. Mm. This one's actually, yeah, you can tell, ready to go. I mean, this is an official track event. This <laughs> And let's kick that gun off. Let's see. Let's see this one more time. Bang! Yeah. <laughs> this is insane. Still waiting. Still waiting. Still waiting. Oh, there she is. Yay! Ali did it. So obviously this was a pretty embarrassing moment for a country that's already had some pretty rough stuff happen to them. I I mean that's sad as far as that goes, but I mean that's just that's hilarious. I I don't care what I don't care who you are. That's funny. Anytime you want to let anybody from any Olympic committee from any country who doesn't have anyone that actually they need to represent the event, please bring your nieces. Please bring uh, your your grandfathers. I I don't give a damn. That's hilarious. That that's mm. I'm I am in full support of this. I like that idea, and I will support so, it. So Somalia, yes, had to apologize. Again, the IOC, I don't even want to get into the long list. Even the latest one in Paris in 2024, the Paris Olympics has now had all sorts of reports of corruption, bribery. The uh, the Brazilian one was an absolute. I don't know if y'all caught the old Brazilian Olympics there. I mean, they had people rowing 
in like just there were like milk cartons and crap there. You know what I mean? It was just it was absolutely just not okay that they allowed Brazil to host that event. You know, Paris should be able to handle their business. They're not third world and run down. But I, I you know, I mean, hey, who knows, man? Maybe maybe twenty uh, year old Nasra Akbar Ali can go ahead and train a little bit. I think she's right there, man. I think she's right there. I think she's almost got it. This is just, dude. The, the, the fact that they let this happen I mean, she's out of frame. And that's in a 100-meter dash. In a 100-meter dash, that's how much it is difference between the rest of us and a professional athlete. Now, yes, she's even out of shape for even most 20-year-olds, but she's out of frame. And it's gone. She's gone. She's, 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 she's no longer there. Oh, my God. That's just that's real. That was a real event. That was in front of real people in a real track event. That is that is fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So there you go. Yes, and as I'm already trying to move on, she's still finishing up the race. Ah, Jesus H. Christ. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. But anyway, so let me move on to something I really wanted to get into today and a more official story here. So NFL season is kicking off. Obviously, everyone's excited. We have the Hall of Fame game. Now, no um, Aaron Rodgers or Deshaun Watson tonight as Cleveland takes on the New York Jets. But we've officially got into football season, and it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Obviously, this is obviously the biggest thing most of us in America get into is NFL, thanks to you know fantasy football and DraftKings and just it's kind of the only sport that's really ours that's left anymore but uh, I mean overall you know we've been discussing and I've discussed on this podcast a lot running backs are having a rough go running backs in the NFL they're they're having a hard time let's say a prayer for the running back um the latest stories being things like the Colts situation Jonathan Taylor and Jim Irsay are having a good old-fashioned showdown good old standoff there um, you know, you got the, uh, let's see, Pollard with the Cowboys and not being able to get his contract renegotiated. Saquon Barkley, you know, is threatening to hold out, then he didn't hold out. You got Kamara now meeting with Goodell. Ronald Jones of the Cowboys has been suspended for PED use, but he says it wasn't PED use, said it was heart medication. I mean, it's just N- 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 Najee Harris going out and bitching. You had, uh, I mean, good God, Nick Chubb was also complaining. I mean, just all these people. The running back is just having a tough time because they've been undervalued, according to them, even though I've mentioned multiple times it doesn't actually lead to the Super Bowl victories to pay a running back top tier. And, I mean, even now, Joe Mixon of the Cincinnati Bengals, which, by the way, I just love. I love the fact that Joe Mixon, who just took a $3 million quote-unquote pay cut. I don't know if y'all heard about this one. Joe Mixon said out loud just yesterday that he took the $3 million pay cut as her sacrifice because he wanted to help the Bengals have a title run, which is just amazing to me. You know, Joe Joe Mixon, good guy. Good guy, Joe Mixon. Um, Never done anything wrong. Obviously a team guy when you consider, I mean, this dude not only did not, not only, let me just make this point and I'm going to get into the meat of the story here, but not only is this just fascinating to me that Joe Mixon, after having a down season and after seeing how the running backs are, you know, going and how things are moving along here as we're seeing, you know, the by committee just system working better. For him to try to pretend that the you know, the $3 million pay cut that he took instead of his ass just being cut, which was going to be, you know, most likely was going to happen. Like I said, he had a down season, but this is a guy who, for back from 2014, in case y'all forgot, I didn't, broke a woman's face when he punched her. That that was fun. That was back in 2014. Then in 2016, had a incident where he ripped up a parking citation, threatened a security guard. Then in just last year, he was uh, arrested and charged with pointing a gun at a woman in downtown Cincinnati. Just uh, this last, he still has an ongoing investigation involving an injured child, a gun going off in his house. They ended up saying it might be his sister, and charges were dropped. But I mean, overall, I, 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 I love that he's sitting here pretending. And oh, by the way, that last one, that um, alleged aggravated menacing when he apparently pointed a gun at some woman, that was the day before their divisional playoff game against the Buffalo Bills. Ended up being this huge distraction. He wasn't able to play very much. Then he also had a down season. The running backs are already having a new market and all that. And he loves to come out loud and say that really it had nothing to do with anything other than he's just a good teammate. Joe's just a good guy, man. He's just doing it all for, for, you know, he's he's just a sacrificial dude. 
Stop breaking the law, asshole! You know, I'll move on from Joe because it's not really important. What's important is the controversy that came up and is, to me, a very interesting story because maybe if the NFL running backs are having such a hard time with their lives and the way things are going, maybe they can start murdering children. Maybe they can just take it out on five-year-olds. Uh, you know, and I, I mean, maybe. I, 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 you know what? I'm going to be, uh, I'll be controversial here. I, I, I'm not for it. I, 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 you know, I think that beating up and decimating five-year-old children, it's, it's, you know, every time I've done it, I've regretted it. And I think you would too. And so, you know, I know there's a lot of tension and there's a lot of stress right now for the NFL running back. But unfortunately, I don't think taking it out on a bunch of five-year-old kids might be the way. But this did come up, and this has been a big controversy. This has been a big hullabaloo, as you want to call it. So the question that has been raised and was answered by Mike Vrabel, the head coach of the Titans, was answered by teammates and Derrick Henry himself, and I want to get into it now, is how many five-year-olds, how many five-year-olds would it take to tackle Derrick Henry? Derrick Henry, you know, for most people, you know, the touchdown leader since 2020. He's had 40 touchdowns since 2020. This guy is six foot three, 247 pounds of just pure truck. I mean, if you've never seen Derrick Henry and uh, just, I mean, again, this is what I'm talking about with professional athletes. Dude, they are strong in a way that's hard to understand. They are strong in a way that the average person, even ones that, you know, you go to Golds or whatever and you get your pomp and you do your thing, it's not, it's not, you're not, you're not even close. You're not even close to most professional athletes. They operate on a level and on a strength and speed ability that is somewhat gladiator-esque. That is something that even the top 1% of the world doesn't really comprehend all the time. They are professionals. And Derrick Henry, in a world of professionals, is considered a truck and a beast for the professional level. I mean, the dude is insane. I mean, if you've never seen Derrick Henry work out, I mean, look at this guy. He's a monster. Derrick Henry, again... Touchdown leader last uh, since 2020, 1,538 yards, 13 touchdowns just last year. Career high, 35 tackles broken. 6'3", 247 pounds. I mean, look at this guy. This guy is just, he, he is a, a human muscle. He's got speed. He's got strength. I mean, this dude is just a nightmare even for NFL players. And so somehow... And again, this is almost as good as the... I, I would love to see this. I'd love to see this right after we had the Somali lady race in the actual, for the gold medal, 100-meter dash. I, I would love to see all this combined. They were somehow came up because, you know, it's training camp. We're still trying to get some stories going. What would it take? How many five-year-old children would it take to tackle that? To tackle that man, Derrick Henry... And they act, they actually, you know, thought it through. And I, and I want to get into it because I actually, I disagree. I disagree slightly with Coach Mike Vrabel when uh, his answer officially was a shit ton. I'll go ahead and play this here for you. But between Derek and his teammates, they asked, again, how, much, how many five-year-olds would it take? And this is overall the, um, the consensus by everyone that's involved and knows Derek personally. How many five-year-olds would it take to tackle Derek Henry? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if they could. How many kids would die in the process, I would imagine. I don't know. Do I need to give you a number? Like a le legitimate number? What kind of hell? What's the area? Is it confined space? I think he's maybe standing, starting to move. Within like, they you, have you like five yards. Okay, so let's say he's got a 10 yard wide space. Mm hmm. It would probably take 35. You want to try it? Test yeah. it out? Yeah, can we try it? Sure, as long as you're one of the five-year-olds. All right, so again, Mike Vrabel says 35. That's not a bad guess. I mean, that's the equivalent of having three defenses of five-year-olds, you know what I mean? So, you know, 11, 11, 11, then maybe a couple extra safeties out there. I, I still don't know. I, I don't think he's even have enough, you know, the, maybe he doesn't have enough confidence. Maybe Derrick Henry, you know, is going to have an off season this year because 35, I, I don't know. I don't think that's going to be enough five-year-old children and I'll get, get into it a little bit more now the players are a little bit on the other side they, they seem to have overestimated the the amount of toddlers that it would take in order to actually pull this off but in case you missed that part so here we go we got teammates answering this same very important question 
Best case, like at least 75. Mm. Why? She's there, can you? She's a walking bus. About a thousand. Let me say a thousand. All of them? Two thousand. Like, honestly, probably about 30. 30? Yeah. And then it takes the whole defense to tackle them, and they're grown men, so I can just imagine five year olds. I don't know. How about y'all get y'all kids and we'll we'll see what that's <laughs> possible five year olds and we'll see what see how it goes. All right. So now the question, you know, they answered it different. Mike Vrabel says it'll take thirty five five year olds in order to tackle Derrick Henry. The first teammate asked said seventy five. Others have said six hundred. Uh, another one said a thousand. Another one said two thousand. Another one said all of them. So the question still pertains. And Derrick even said, you know, let's go ahead and bring some five year olds out here and let's give it a shot. How many five year olds would it take to tackle that human being? I mean, dude, in case I showed you him working out. Now, let me show you, just to give you again, in case you're not familiar with the the work of Derrick Henry and you haven't been watching the NFL since the last about four or five years, this dude is is different. He's different even at the NFL. Even at the NFL level, this guy is a truck. There's him punking Josh Norman. I mean, ugh. 6'3", 247, man. Mm. It's not a big crowd, but they're fired up. Look at him push away Calhoun. That's a, that, I mean, that's a defensive line. And let me go ahead and just go ahead and give you some more just analyzation here. But yeah, this guy at six foot three, 247 pounds, I'm going to guess runs around probably 19, 20 miles per hour. You know, the fastest NFL guys, when you give them, eh, you know, a full head of steam, the really, really Tyree kills, get up to about 22, 23. I mean, in open, in open field like that, I'm going to guess Derek probably goes about 20, 21. I mean, he is a bigger guy, but he does still have some speed to him. I mean, look at him out running some safeties and corners there. Uh, but again, the strength of this dude just punking other NFL athletes. I, I, I don't know how many. It, it really is. It's a, it's a tough question to ask. Now, the average five-year-old, in case you need to know the numbers here, the average five-year-old is uh, three foot seven, five-year-old boy, or I think we're going to keep this to the boy side, are three foot seven and 40 pounds. So when you take 6'3", 247, was squatting in that training video, probably 600 pounds, stiff-arming linebackers towards 20 miles an hour. I mean, when you combine that weight and speed all together, if he gets a full head, if he's got full bore, I mean, that's the equivalent of, like, uh, the metric ton of a car idling. So to put that, to put that guy against your 5-year-old children and give you an idea Again, in case you don't have a five-year-old or you're not hanging around any, this is like a stud five-year-old playing football. Like, this is this is about four or five years old here. And, I mean, this kid is like, this was a highlight reel. This is something that's like, this is one of the best five-year-olds we're going to find. How many of those is it going to take? Dude, I, mm, I, I would say at least 300. And I'm not even joking. I would say at least 300 of those it would take because, and there's a lot of hypotheticals we have to work out here. You know, like, are we going to hypnotize Derrick Henry? Are we going to, you know, because if he's going to go full out, I mean, he's going to kill some. I mean, even Mike Variable said so. If you allow, we'd have to find a few hundred children that absolutely no one loved or cared about and were completely disposable. Because if he gets a full head and he's going 1920, that first wall of children, they're, they're going to die. Like, we're going to have, it's going to look something like the first scene out of um, uh, Saving Private Ryan. Does anyone remember that movie? And that first scene where, like, the guy's like, oh, here's my arm. Let me go pick that up. Oh, I think my leg's over there. The, the level of explosion when Derrick Henry hits that first wall of children, if he's just like, if we've hopped him up, if we either hypnotized Derrick Henry, done something to where he has no mercy, where he just doesn't give a damn about these kids, you know, hypnotize them to think they've all shot his dog or something, or we just put him on PCP. Have you ever tried sugar or PCP? But a full, like, needs to score, life depends on it, Billy Cole, you know, uh, what was the movie, the Bruce Willis movie? I'll get back to it anyways. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about, like, just full-out aggressive, angry, pissed-off Derrick Henry. If he runs into a wall of five-year-old children, he's going to murder at least six or seven. I mean, the first six or seven are going to have major injuries and are going to, if they don't die, they're they're going to be pretty, like, they're going to be, you know, messed up for a long time. Honey, take a good picture, I'm dead! 
Yes. And, and I mean, so, you know, that that's a big part of it. The other part is, you know, again, the, the parameters of the field. Like, does he have time to run around? Like, how much do these kids, because they can't track him down either. I mean, again, look at that five-year-old. Do, I mean, do you give an idea? Look at this five-year-old again. This is the, the – the, 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 I don't think people understand. Dude, they're only 40 pounds and three foot seven, man. They, they don't have their coordination yet. This is not going to – like, I mean, it's going to take a significant amount of this. That's, that's like 10 of them. I mean, he would just plow right through that. Seriously, helmets would have been flown off. There would be some kid's sneaker somewhere in Albuquerque. Can you imagine Derek just and just smashing them? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to think here. I'm going to say 500. I'm going to say 500, and you would have to set it up almost Civil War style, wouldn't you? Like, you'd have to set it up to where basically, um, like, you'd have to have walls. Like, you remember, like, in the old WW2s and Civil Wars and stuff and the Revolutionary Battles where they just had the first two or three just walls of people where you're like, yeah, you guys, you're you're here to die. Like, that's kind of your job, so just walk into gunfire. Honey, take a good picture, I'm dead! Uh, you would have to have the first wall of two or three. I'd, I'd line them up. If I had 500 kids trying to tackle Derrick Henry... I would have probably, you know, at least uh, my first battalion would be of like two to three hundred of just a wall and kind of Tetris style, like unblockable three wall thing coming at him. And that'll at least slow him down, I would think, after he again just bulldozes through these poor little bastards and then and, and, and leaves them in his wake. At that point, you're going to have to have some of the really strong ones like cling to the ankles and try to just maybe anchor weight them here. But I, it's still, it's going to be, it's, mm, I give it 50 50 with, with three to 500. I, it, it, it's still a close call. Can they actually tackle that absolute truck of a human being? And I played this before in case you missed it. I've shown this to you before in case you think I'm just being silly. Somehow I was able to find this video. This is a soccer. Uh, experiment here and then once again out of China which I'll just you know ignore the fact that they just do a lot of crazy stuff Jap Japanese China TV is just bananas let's talk about Chinese people but they actually put a hundred uh, children and, and they look older than five against three professional soccer players and see if they could stop him. This is what I'm talking about, in case you think I'm just being silly, or if we're going to answer this hypothetical question, I think we need to really break this down. Look at this. This is 100 kids. I'm going to say they look 8-9-ish against three professional soccer players to try to stop three pro players from scoring a goal, and they're mincemeat. They're toast. I mean, they don't know where they're running. They're, they're all, you know, they're herd mentality packing. But, I mean, look at this. This is a good, like, analogy or, like, um, you know, at least some sort of research we can put into this. Look how easily three scored on 100. And look at the size difference. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to once again reiterate, this is not three, six foot three, 247 pounds, run 20 plus miles an hour, stiff arm 300 men for breakfast, you know, 300 pound men for breakfast, and are just even in a world of strong athletes, considered one of the strongest guys absolutely out there, can squat 600 pounds. You know, these they're not even on that level of size. And look at how easily they just run past them. They're bigger, they're stronger. And that's a hundred of them. It's a hundred of them. Nothing. It was nothing to score that goal. I mean, right there, like I said, look at that wall. Look at this wall. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's only 14. You would have to have, I want to say, at least 100. You're going to have to have 100 go across the field. If, if Derek gets the whole field, you're going to have to put them across this way, and he's going to plow through them. It's going to look like those little games you see on the apps and TikToks with the zombies, and you just brrr, and you run through with a bulldozer. That's what it's going to look like. And you're going to have, like, five-year-old arms just flailed all over the place. It's going to be a mess. I'm going to stick with 500. I'm going to say it'll take four to 500 children that are five years old. Again, five years old. Maybe only 200 if you can find ones like this kid. And I think this kid's older than five years old. But maybe find, like, if you can clone this kid who just is about to truck. This is maybe Derrick Henry when he was eight years old. Sit your ass down. Give me 200 of them. And I'm going 50-50, 200 of that kid. If I can just get a machine and clone him. But even then, man, I don't know, dude. I, uh, mm. 
I'm going to say four to 500. You leave your comments or let me know in the, in the video here what you think. I'm going to say it would take four to 500 legitimate children, to five-year-old children, to try to tackle Derrick Henry. I, I really don't think kids of that size are going to be able to handle this crazy bastard for more than, again, how are they going to latch on? How are they going to be able to latch on? How are they going to be able in order to hold him? I mean, look at this. This, this is NFL dudes, man. This is NFL dudes. And he's just sit your punk ass down. I mean, you know, these are top guys. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm going to say four to 500. I, I think that's legit my answer. I'm sticking with it. I'm going to say anywhere from 350 to 500 five-year-olds. And I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and call it. I, I mean, the, again, they're three foot seven, 40 pounds. I, I mean, I'll show you this real quick. Um, this is Deuce Vaughn, new running back for the Cowboys. I don't know if you guys have checked him out. Actually, been doing well. He's five foot five, but he's like you know 170, 180 pounds. He's a stocky five foot five guy. And look at what he looks like against professional guys. Look at this little, look at this little fella run. Who's a big boy? Who's in the NFL? Yes, you are, Deuce. Yes, you are. Who's gonna catch the screen? You caught the screen. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. The helmet's not helping, man. That Lord helmet looking space balls gigantic thing is just making I mean I mean that dude is you know will kick most of our asses. That five foot five will decimate you. Yes, he will. It's an NFL player there. But I mean, even he looks like a child against professional guys. Derrick Henry makes them look like children. If so facto, it's gonna take three hundred at least little bastards to try to take down that other mutant. This video is, again, just this is amazing. The helmet. It's the helmet, dude. The helmet's killing you, dog. Who's a big boy? Who ran Who ran the route? Yes, you did. Yes, you did, Deuce. You did. You look at you do that cutback. You did that cutback. Yes, you did. I, he, and he could destroy me. Destroy me. So, doing the levels of it, I, I, I'm going to stick with that number. I think that's fair. All right. Let me go ahead and move on. I think we've answered that question. Uh, again, give me your comments if you think that it's any different. If you think it's 50, you're out of your goddamn mind. I, I don't know what to tell you. If, you, if you. if you don't go at least 100, you didn't pay attention to any of the evidence, any of the video. I didn't even get into the metric ton rate. I probably should have done that. You know, they say hello, Ginata, just so you know. Uh, run on, is about 330, runs under a uh, five-second 40. His metric ton force is 8.4. Force of tons, just so you know, that's only four tons less than a 30 mile per hour car crash with no seatbelt. I mean, it, it's it's a different level. It's a different breed. It's a different thing that a human, an adult, can barely handle. All right. Well, foreigners are taking over all American jobs, and that sucks. I don't know what to tell you. Ticking our dubs. They took our jobs. They took our jobs. They took our jobs. Yeah, I'm upset too. Uh, especially in basketball, it's really just becoming a normal thing now. You're just going to see this continue to move along here. As you think of, you know, the top four guys now, top five guys, the at least top ten, and especially top four or five, if you're looking at young guys you want to start an NBA franchise with, they're, none of them are American. I, I mean, we're, we're completely running out of American idols. You know, Steph, Jimmy, LeBron, all those guys, they're getting old, man. They are getting old. We don't really have a lot of Americans coming up that we can look at at the same level as the foreigners. The foreigners are just taking over the game. I, it's just what it is, man. I mean, you think of, you know, you think Jokic, you think Luka, you think Embiid, you think Giannis. Yeah, you know, none of these guys American. You got SGA, that's Canadian, that doesn't count. I mean, the the, the influence, the influx of basketball and basketball dominance is completely now just from, you know, the, the European countries, from, you know, all sorts of, we've had an African movement come through in the collegiate level, and now we are seeing the Euro athlete that usually goes straight to the pros or is a, you know, kind of, you know, semi-pro and then comes over the NBA situation. They're now starting to take over college. And I'm going to give you a called shot. This story, this is, again, kind of a small story, but it came out, and with Wimbanyama, I'm going to continue to learn his name, Wimbanyama coming out for the San Antonio Spurs, and now this new, and Chet Holmgren probably going to be a Rookie of the Year candidate. This tall, skinny, game-changing-like kind of Euro-style ball. At least Chet is one of ours. He's, he's American. <laughs> But I'm going to call a shot here. This is the next Wimbim Yama 
type guy here. So let me go ahead and tell you. I have fag- I have found someone. He's going to be at Kentucky next year, and I want you to pay attention right now. This kid is, if he's not going to be at least a solid NBA player, I, then I'll just quit talking. I'll, I'll say I don't know basketball. I don't know what to talk about. I'm that confident in this kid they got out of Kentucky now. Shots fired. Shots fired. He's calling his shot. I am calling my shot. Look out for a kid named Zavonimir Ivisic. This just came out the other day. One of the top European prospects is now committed to Kentucky and looks like is leading a again a a movement a foreign movement where now with the nil deals where they're able to get paid to play collegiate ball instead of playing in a spanish league or greece or somewhere now you're going to start seeing it this is the first year that it's happened you're going to see this influx of european basketball players do the one and done thing in college as well thanks to the you know national nil deals which is uh, by the way nil just in case you didn't know that stands for name image likeness so with the new name image likeness deals they're going to be able to get paid while they come over here. And, I mean, other than not getting paid, there was no advantage to playing overseas versus in college. I mean, the Final Four, March Madness, let's face it, the, the, the world is your oyster on campus. You're a god, especially at the schools like a Kentucky where the football team has never been at the same status as the basketball team. Hell, in high school, I got to live out my last two years where in Texas I was in the one high school in my city where the basketball team was the top thing that existed. We didn't have a football team my ugly ass did way too well for myself considering I was captain of the team and that was a big deal can you imagine being a stud at a big school like a Kentucky and having you know all of that to yourself more or less to you and like 10 other teammates it's it's a nice life to live other than you weren't getting paid now they're starting to get paid and so you're starting to see them come over here and again turkin their derbs they took our game they took your game they took your game and it's just going to keep happening. You're seeing it in the NBA with Luka, Giannis, everyone else taking over the top stars. You're now going to see it in college, and I think this kid might be the leader of it. And keep an eye on him. His name is Zivonimir Ivisic. And if Wembenyama is considered a top prospect, this guy is seven foot two, Croatian, committed to Kentucky. Just it was kind of a surprise thing. He's already 20 years old, and he already had great experience at the uh, FIBA U20, where he was averaging 11.4, 3.4 blocks, five rebounds, 34% from threes in 19 minutes per game for Croatia, playing against grown ass men. And I'll show you some highlights here. This kid. At seven foot two, seven foot three, this is to me. I salivate more watching this guy as an overall finished, uh, kind of like ready to go than even Victor, I, or even Chet. I mean, this is just, dude. These guys are coming out now out of these countries, and they're just here to kick our asses. So go ahead and get used to it. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. Look at this kid. This kid was at night. This is him at nineteen. Seven foot two. Look at that handle. That's better than Victor. That shot looks better. That's a pure shot. I want to rewind that. That is a pure damn shot. Victor's is still kind of hitchy and has its moments. I mean, that is a nice little double cross step back into a fadeaway three and is smooth as butter. I mean, this kid's going to be Kentucky next year thanks to the new NIL rules. Look at that step back. Look at the fluidity of that jumper. The form is perfect. There he is blocking shots. Goes and snatches the rebound. I look at these this film clip and go, this kid to me is more polished and, and overall talented than Victor is. That is a pretty jumper. That is a pretty jump shot. There is nothing wrong with that form. Doing the J Will behind the back. Give me that shit and go home. I mean, look at this guy go, man. Pulling up. Again, that form, it, it, I, I, I'm going to keep talking about the form, and he's got a little bit of a post up here, but this guy looks like a damn small forward. I mean, he moves and acts to me more like a small forward, and I see more quickness. I see, ooh, boy, man, I'm telling you, man, even at the collegiate level, and he's leading a group, by the way. UCLA signed uh, three international talents, Ede Mara, Burke, Buyu Tensil, John Vide. Uh, Arizona just got Montaus Krivas and Paulius Muraskas from Lithuania. But I think the highlight and the one that's going to lead this new wave and just go ahead and start this whole takeover now, not just at the NBA, not just of Major League Baseball, you know, Shohei Okunia and those guys. You know, America's pretty much gone from that. We got a few stringers, on, you know, a few hangers on there for the, but for the most part, they've taken over. Uh, we never owned soccer. 
uh, golf, we're starting to lose golf. We did. We haven't owned tennis on the male side for at least the last decade or fifteen years. You know, we at least we used to have the NBA. That's been taken away from us in the last few years, and now collegiate ball is going to be taken over and led by again this monster, who is just. I am so impressed watching this. Like, what is this prospect missing? What am I missing? If you tell me this kid ain't got it, then I ain't seen it. I mean. Jesus, I'm going to continue to reiterate just how pretty and smooth that jumper is. I'm going to continue to say it. Yes, the, the, the obviously defensive prowess, going and getting the rebound, the handle for seven foot two, the ability to uh, you know improvise with that spin there. But that release, man, that's pretty, man. I, when when he gets into a more wide open system and gets more open looks that he's not in Croatia, and again, just get the, that crap out of here. Go home. I'm going to yank one on you because I'm just that dude. I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. They're taking their derbs. They took our yabs! They took our yabs! They took our yabs! Again, his name is Zvonimir Ivisic, and he's going to be a Kentucky this year. If you're a Kentucky fan, the fact that you just kind of snatched this kid out of the blue is absolutely insane. And when the world kind of catches up to him, remember who told you, remember who said it early, remember who said, man, this kid is going to be something. This kid has got to be, that's not close to the real deal. I've never seen it, and I know a lot about basketball. You're just going to take my word on this. I predicted the future more times than I can count. You're psychic. You can predict the future. All right, so there we go. I said it would take 350 to 500 five-year-olds to tackle Derrick Henry. We showed you the Somalian sprinter and their apologies for the saddest but funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. We've mentioned now the foreign movement NCAA basketball with Zivana Mirovicic and, uh, again, leading that movement now with NIL deals, opening up money at the collegiate level, uh, just another sport being taken away from good old America there, and there's not really much we can do about it. So let's have some fun. Let's end the show with some videos. You seen it? You yeah. seen it? Don't look at me. Don't look at me, little puppet. Have you seen this? Have you read about this? It's already been a video-heavy show, and I said that from the beginning. But, uh, again, Tricky Guy Sports, just search it on YouTube. Anytime I release the audio, we always put the video along with it. This is always my favorite section at the end to just kind of react, have some fun, be a little silly, cry. I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the Internet just gives me stuff to react to, and then I end up doing it, whether it's good or bad. So let me see what we have today that should be interesting. Oh, um, I eat ass. I eat ass. <laughs> Mentioning what happens when children take on adults. Some high school somewhere. Some idiot streaker. Not really a streaker streaker, but still runs in the middle of the field with a sign. That was pretty interesting. So here we go. In case you didn't see this, uh, let me go ahead. So, yeah. Run in the middle of the field. Big sign. In case you don't see it. Uh, it's kind of blurred right there, but I eat ass. Got a, I mean, he, he went out of the way to go get a flag made. I don't know if he had it pre-made. I don't know if they sell it online. They sell God knows everything online. But somehow he got a nice professional flag that says, I eat ass, period. And I like that, you know, he's emphasizing it. Just so you know. Anyone out there in the crowd? Anyone out there listening? Any ladies out there? Any men? I don't know. I don't know what he's into. Maybe both. Uh, I, I'm not going to uh, assume in 2023. But, yes, yeah, streaking the high school football game. Big flag. I eat ass. Very proud of himself. Football players seem to be enjoying the distraction. The only one not is a security guard. He's about to rock bottom. Sit your ass. Eat that ass. Since your ass is now outside of your head, maybe you can go ahead and eat that for us. But yes, that's still credit to him, though. I like it. I support it. It's not something I usually do in the bedroom, but I mean, I just support the effort. And then taking just a rock bottom choke slam. I, if anyone wants to one up him at a high school game, I'm all for it. I like that idea, and I will support it. He eats ass, man. He eats ass on the field. He eats ass off. He ate ass after he got slammed. A lot of ass eating. A lot of ass eaten from that child. Um, let me see what else I got. Oh, this is never a good idea. I, I don't know why, you know, and I hate to say it. Mostly this is a certain group of people. 
Because I'm white. Because he's white. Because he is white. Look at him, man. What you if, if you're someone who's not uh, for the land of Caucasus and the land of the Caucasian people, uh, the easiest way to kill us is to give us a bunch of beer and dare us to do stupid shit. Kill Whitey! Um, this is like a William Tellish, I'm going to put a beer on my head and we'll have my butt. I'll bet, you, I'll bet you I can kick a beer off your head. I'll bet you I took karate classes. I know jujitsu. I can go ahead. I bet I can kick that Coors Light right off your melon. Mm. Mm. The, the whiplash. The whiplash is just, yeah. I was that close, man. Put your beer back up. I could do it the next time. I swear to God, I'm going to kick that thing right off your noggin. I. Mm. Yeah, it's white people and beer. I, there's nothing else to say. That is just, just white people stuff with alcohol combined. Kill Whitey! That's exactly what that is. Should I do this now? I'm going to do it. Um, I had nothing to do with this. Since uh, karate and stuff, it's got me in, in the mode here, you know, making me think about it. So showing that karate clip makes me want to go ahead and get to this. This is something I'm... Uh, all right. I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to show it. And I don't want you getting on my ass for this because I didn't do it. Um, this is from Spain. This has been going viral. I had nothing to do with this. I didn't organize this. I didn't set it up. I, I, all I did was see the video. It was sent to me. And I said, okay, I'll let you see it. But again, I do not know. I, mm, I didn't set this. I didn't organize. Someone did. Someone organized all of this karate exhibition. And I had nothing to do with it. I'm not going to hell. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me, and I'll now show you the clip. Are you ready? Um, yeah. Here we go. I'm not. I'm not going to hell. I am not going to hell. What the hell? Mm. I, I, there are so many questions and so many comments that I would like to make at this moment, and I just don't know if they're worth it. So I'll go ahead and go to the internet where they're undefeated and read you a couple comments here because, dude, hmm, hmm. As one person pointed out here, as I'll get the first one up, this is not martial arts. That was partial arts. I reading i'm i'm reading what he said that's all i did here and then i'll show you the other one here and i think is at least a fair question um who tied the black belt for that individual i didn't do it i didn't do it I, mm. it's women versus a man it's it's not like he doesn't have like mm, and and but i mean he knows, like, he's not mentally challenged from anything I can tell. Like, he knows that they're acting, right? I mean, there's no, like, uh, you can't placate him on that level to where he really thinks it's an actual, mm, can you? I mean, can you? I don't know. I, I, I really, again, this is from Spain. You can look this dude up. I had a hard time, couldn't find his name here. But, again, I, you know, like, I mean, she punches, dude, mm. She punched, like, four feet high. He's two foot eight tops. Like, and he's in here. He's got the turn. And, uh, yeah, sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. Oh, take. Oh, she's down. She's. 
and everyone's cl- you know what no you're out you're gonna have to find it again i'm not gonna replay the whole thing you're gonna have to find the rest again yourself i'm not going to hell for him and his partial arts or finding out who tied the belt i mm. nope Nope, nope, nope. Had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it at all. Um, how about we go ahead and just uh, cleanse the palate here? Let's see a dude on a bike trying to be cool eat complete crap. That's always fun. Hey, get a picture. I'm on a bike. Pow. I, this is just, I, I love stuff like this. I, I have, again, no no issues with this at all. When idiots try to be cool and keep it real and they just get, it ends up biting them in the ass, literally. When keeping it real goes wrong. This this stuff just makes me chuckle here, especially because he's just so cocky about it. Yeah, I'm standing on a bike, dog. Look at me, I'm cool. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Sucks to be that guy. Sucks to be that guy. Also, suck to be this grandpa. This was another sad one. This is another sad one here. I'll just go ahead and play it for you. This is some sled thing ride of some type somewhere. And didn't go so well for old grandpa. There's the dad. Looks like the grandson. And here comes old G-Paw. And he's take a good picture, I'm dead! And he's dead. And he's absolutely dead. One more time in case you missed it. Dad rides in smoothly. Son, no problem. And he's gone. And we don't know where he is. I don't know if he's landed yet. But, uh, yeah. That, that's just, that's, uh, that was the last day. <laughs> that was that was Grandpa's last moments. Here lies part of Earl Simpson or whatever this guy's poor name was. Yeah, uh, they had the you know, yeah. I don't know how he gained so much more speed than the other two, but he's gone. He's gone. Honey, take a good picture. I'm dead. He flew off, man. He is somewhere else. Somewhere else. What else do I have somewhere I could bring you? Let me see if there's any more stuff I really wanted to show you today. Um, da, 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 da. Last one. Last one, I'll call it. Uh, this is just a rafting. This is some sort of rafting thing gone wrong. And I just love that the leader just sold out everyone else. I think I, I, it, the highlight itself is just okay. It's the way that he just is so proudly because he's clearly the captain of the ship here pun intended, and just could not be happier to just leave these guys to drown underneath beneath him. I mean, this is just unbelievable, just self-centeredness. Look at this guy. Oh, the ref flipped. But I'm all right. Yay, look at me. Like, is he one of the... He looks like, actually, he looks like a tour guide. That makes it even worse. The more I watch this video, I'm pretty sure that's a tour guide, and these are just some poor schmucks. Because, again, professional versus the average Joe, this is another, again, resounding example of what can go wrong here. And he's just way too, like, hey, guys, look. Those guys are all dead, but I'm fine. Look at my reflexes. Boy, I'm fast. Quick like a cat. I'm curious why they call me Whiskers. Hi, you ever been on a white water raft and flipped? Then you just jumped up and left them all to drown beneath you in your glory? So you hold your paddle up with pride? Hey, cups win. Cups win. All right, that's it. I got to go. I love you. Again, professionals are different than you and even podcasters, hopefully. Maybe not. Talk to you next time. (laughs) 